My name is Vahid Chitsas, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for taking this time and being here today. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Let us know where you're coming in from. I'm uh, Joey Thurman. I'm a fitness and nutrition expert. I'm in Chicago, Illinois right now. I'm downstairs at a, uh, a, the gym, and I just landed from being at Harvard and Cambridge yesterday uh, interviewing Professor David Sinclair for uh, uh, my podcast. So I've been, I've been all over the place. I'm going to leave for L.A. in a week and a half, so it's uh, a little busy. Awesome, awesome. Let us know when you get to L.A. You have a full studio. Maybe you should do a couple of videos. Yeah, you should that'd actually be great. do a real live session. There you go. That we're doing. We call it live session, but it's not live, but it's all yeah. good. So Think and Grow Rich, when did you start? How did you start? Uh, you know, I, I started essentially as a kid. I, I always liked playing sports and hockey, and I played hockey through college, and I went to college basically to play hockey. And yes, these are my, all my real teeth. Uh, and, and I realized that I liked learning after I got out of college. So I got certified as a personal trainer. And started training in, in Chicago at a gym called Crunch that was all over the nation. And now there's only a couple of them. Uh, and I was there for a little bit and started in a, another gym. And I, and I decided, you know what? I can only make so much money. There's a ceiling of being a trainer. It's great coming out of college, making 50 bucks an hour. But 10 years later, you're still making 50 bucks an hour. So how could I monetize that? So I completely quit, quit my job at the corporate gym. And I took all my clients with me and started working on stuff and doing TV and wrote a book and... Um, I, I really had to uh, fire and then aim, um, as they say. Awesome, awesome. So what were, what were one or two principles that you took, took away from thinking, Gorich, that you think we should know or people should focus on? Uh, you know, I, I, th I think that the, that the self-belief self is huge because I've, I've always been shown to be an extrovert and people think I'm ext extroverted, but I'm actually introverted. Um, so I needed to have a lot of belief in myself. So that's huge. Um, and it's great that everybody from outside can tell you like you're, you're doing great and you're doing all these things. But if you don't believe in yourself, you're not going to break through that ceiling. Uh, so hopefully it's a glass ceiling. You make it a little bit easier. Uh, but then really just taking a chance. And that is one of the biggest things of taking a chance on myself uh, and telling my loved ones and uh, my wife, it was my fiance at the time, you know, I really need to take this chance and I, I need to make a leap and do something for myself. Otherwise, I'm going to be miserable being a 45 year old personal trainer and my back goes out and not making any money and working for somebody else. So um, I really felt like I needed to work for myself. Awesome. I love it. Listen, I can't, I can't, I, I, I've been wanting to ask this question. I saw one, by the way, your Instagram is doing a fantastic job. Whoever is running that or if you're doing it, that's awesome. I love it. I love the content. It's Thank amazing. You. Uh, it's it's very authentic, very real, and and the content that you put out there is amazing. But I couldn't uh, I couldn't help noticing you had a person. She was like forty years old, fifty years old, a little bit on the older side. Mm -hmm. You had her standing in front of the mirror. I watched that video. That is crazy stuff. What was the purpose of that? Because people may not know that yeah. you do crazy things like that. So tell us what that was. Yeah. So that was actually. Uh... I got a show when Facebook Watch originally came out, and that was called Home Sweat Home. So I, I went in with uh, my co-host, Juliana Hever, who's a plant-based dietitian. Um, look her up. She's, she's brilliant. If you're interested in plant-based dieting, you should really check her out. But we did this show where we went into people's lives, and we lived with them for a weekend. And it, and it was less about, we're not going to get them to lose a bunch of weight over a weekend. But can you change your habits, and can you change your mind? You know, if you can truly be a mastermind, see what I did there, um, with, with yourself and with your body. So I put her in front of a mirror because she didn't look at a, at a full-length mirror, and she couldn't even remember the last time. I think it was a decade or something. So I put her in front of a full-length mirror, and I talked to her. and said, what do you see right now? And a lot of that, you know, wasn't in there because it was a short series, so they had to cut a lot of it. But she had a lot of self-doubt and a lot of neg negativity, and she would see herself, you know. She would see, awesome. Yeah, she would, she would see herself as um, not worth being able to see her entire person. So I told her, you're beautiful, and you need to say you're beautiful, and you need to actually believe it. So I put her in front of that mirror and got her believing it and feeling it. Uh, and she had dropped 20 or 30 pounds uh, a few months after when we checked in. So uh, I would like to think that was a pivotal moment um, in her health, in her life, and her longevity. Um, Could that be used for an entrepreneur? If I stand in front of a mirror, what do I want to tell myself? Let's say I'm not looking to lose any weight. 
Everybody needs to lose weight. I think everybody wants to lose some weight. I think that's like a common denominator between everybody. Everybody that I know always wants to lose some weight. Sure. So it's cool, no problem. But and sometimes you lose weight for the right reason. You want to pick up, mu you know, muscles. Different reason. It doesn't sure. need to be that you're fat and trying to get in diet. That's not the case. But here's my question: How can an entrepreneur that wants to apply success principles can it stand in front of mirror? When I stand in front of mirror. What should I tell myself? I, I think you want to tell yourself some some goals of the day. Everybody wants to look at the future, and it's great to want to be a multimillionaire. And you know what I remember saying when I was young, I was 25. I want to be a millionaire by 30. That's wonderful. But what are the steps I'm going to take today that I'm going to do that? What's your day going to look like? So planning out your day, like here's what I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do today. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to hit the ground running. I'm going to get X, Y, and Z done. Why? Because I believe in myself. My family believes in myself. And what's my purpose? And what's my intention? If you find your intention in life, that is going to take you so much beyond. I thought, well, I've got a one and a half year old son. I thought, okay, I need to make a bunch of money before he's born. And I set all these goals for myself and they were lofty and it was too lofty. And then when he was born, I realized, you know what, let me focus on my family first. So I'll be there and be present. I was used to sit there and work on the computer and write programs and do all sorts of stuff while I was home with him, but I wasn't spending quality time with him. So then I would spend time at the office or at the gym and get that done where I knew I had an hour of undivided attention to spend with him and spend with my family. And once I made that shift and it was a subtle shift of just focusing on that hour, that intention that I had when I had, when I got to come home, that really actually made my business thrive much more because I was more happy internally with my family life. And then in turn, my business could thrive. And I really think that that, that exudes and, and people feel that from me. Uh, you know, when they meet me the first time or when they've known me for years. That is awesome. And I 100% and I agree. A lot of times people think that their business is not doing good and they need to be working on their business. But in reality, there are other factors because we're human beings. There's other factors. It's not just your work or your business. There are other factors that come in it. And I noticed that individuals with family, with children, they tend to give it a lot more. I think they're more... I think they give up much long. I don't think they give up as easily as other people because they're grounded. Because yeah. I can never think, I mean, you have a son, I have a daughter. I can never, I mean, being Persian also some, has something to do. I can never imagine that my daughter is going to say, my daddy give up. Like that would be the end of the world for me. I'm not worried yeah. about money. This, But if she has for one second that thought that daddy chicken shit out and gave up, that, that would, like, devastate me. I can't even yeah. think about it. Like, I don't even want to put it in the universe. But that, like, get, that gets me, like, riled up. I want to go work 20 hours a day so that never happens. And it has nothing to do with money. And people laugh at that. They're like, there's no money goal. I'm like, yeah, because that, to me, is way more important than money. Absolutely. Money is just a tool, but that to my daughter, and it, it just is different. So yeah, I mean, uh, even even when I hear you say that, like it, that that affects me. I can feel that. I'm like, I'm like I, I automatically put myself, you know, in the place of my son said that because I I want to be, I want to make my family proud, and that that's the one thing I I don't ever want to let him down. I'm sure at some point it's going to happen. But if I strive to not do that, then hopefully it'll happen much less and less. So even when I'm going through a capital fundraise right now to do a new fitness lab concept in Chicago and the partners that I'm seeking, I prefer them to have children because I know exactly, I know they're not gonna give up. I know they're not gonna give up on themselves, but they're not gonna give up on their family. So obviously we've got partners that, that don't have children. I completely get that. But I know the ones that are gonna be there and they put the sweat equity in and they're gonna be there for their family. They're gonna hunker down that little bit more because they've got somebody else to live for. And once my son was born, I knew, well, my life doesn't matter anymore. What matters is his life and my family and being there for them. So that was just a huge shift in my, um, conscious really got it tell us a little bit about uh, a short version of what's your podcast about and how could people find you sure the podcast is called fatter future podcast and i've been told for years to do a podcast but i didn't want to start a podcast just to start a podcast i was approached by uh, himalaya studios which owns the himalaya app uh, to do a podcast and i didn't want to just do fitness i wanted to be the guinea pig essentially so the first episode i did ketamine for my depression i self suffer from depression so i trip balls from my depression i had a therapist in the room and i talk about that on the first episode the next episode i did brain training where they they showed my brain hit off one side of the hockey 
and, and it bounced off the other. So uh, um, I talked about that. And the next episode, I've got the fitness director of men's health and I worked out with him. So I'm the guinea pig for all of these episodes. I just interviewed David Sinclair at Harvard who wrote Lifespan, New York Times bestselling author who was knighted. Uh, you know, so I was calling him sir. So I, I'm able to get all of these interviews and actually in person, I fly to go see these people. I'm going to LA running a Spartan race and then I'm gonna have Joe Decina on the podcast in January and talk about it. So that, that's really, I, I try to be there in person because uh, you know it's nice to connect with everybody, but there's just something like if I come to LA, I would, I would love to hang out with you too. Like that in-person connection, that tangible connection where you can touch, you can see, you can you feel it, you sometimes smell of that person, you can't ever take that away. So I, well, the age of social media is wonderful, but at the same time, I, I really like to get that connection. And hopefully, I, I'm really honest, awesome. you know, in the podcast, 100%. it's called my best Bad relationships. My best relationships have been like that, where we met on, on different circle online, outside. It could have been just an email, could have been at a gathering. But when you hang out with those people and you get to know them, and it, it's different because you and I will share a lot more in person than we share on social media because it's way more intimate. And we let our guards down a lot more in person so you get to know exactly what my why is for my mission my and i get to know what yours is so it kind of gets a little bit better listen i thank you so much for taking this time and being with us i definitely want to do another episode because i know a lot of people want to learn fitness and health a couple of tips here and there so i'll have my team reach out to you and whenever you're in la my studio is completely open to you brother let me know what you need perfect early early december send me know. done deal talk to you later Bye.